Hello and welcome to Devin's Workshop. Today I will be showing off the TR Cowbell. Both of these MCP chips are taking up uh, both buses, which does not allow the Stemma port, Stemma QT port, or this breakout to work. So these are non-functional because this chip is using this bus. So it's always going to say bus in use if you try and use that. Okay, so let's go to the computer. So this is Easy EDA. This is a PCB design tool. It's a free one that I use, and it has great integration with uh, open source hardware, OSH. So if you go to my GitHub and you open up the schematic link, it'll bring you here. This is interactive. You can play with it and everything. Um, you can even save your own revisions of the boards um, if you know what you're doing and you can save the project. This is all totally open source. You are free to use this. So here's the board. 10 and 11 have to be cut. And then we jumper the SCL and SDA from one chip to the other. So pins uh, two and three over here, two pins two and three over here. And now it's time to go over the address mistake. This is how it looks on the board, right? You've got your I2C addressing, two rows. The MCP really wants three, three rows, where you have a 3B3 as the third row. So you have your three volt pad signal and you either solder it to ground, like up here. If you solder all three to ground, you get zero X 20. But if you solder one of them high to three volts, you'll get zero X 21. That's how it's done. It's not like other I2C chips that only need ground for addressing. Okay, so we go back to the board and you're like, okay, so where do we get three, three volts from? Luckily, there's a main three volt line right next to it, to a resistor. Take the solder off because all the boards that came out, uh, they have, they're soldered up already. Um, so take the solder off between the ground and the signal pad, go from the signal pad to the three volt. And that should give this one um, 0x21 address. So as for actually cutting the trace, where's the best place to do that? We could cut right here. It's kind of hard to get to. That's a really hard place to get into with a, uh, a utility knife. Something really sharp to just cut the traces, and scrape away some of the trace, you know, etc. So we really want to find a place where these two lines are isolated, like right here. So you could cut right, right towards this, this mounting hole, right above R9. Right there seems pretty safe. And if you're wondering about the, the bottom layer of the board, you know, all the traces on the bottom layer, well, that's below the FR4. That's on the complete opposite side of the board. So you don't have to worry about the bottom traces. You only have to worry about the top traces. Uh, as long as you don't go like too deep through the board, uh, which I, I I don't see happening with a utility knife, so there's, there's really not much to worry about that. You could also use an exacto blade or or some type of um, pick tool, scrape away the trace, whatever your preference is. And either way, these two have to be cut, and I have personally never cut tra a trace before, so this is going to be a first for me. So this this angle, I think I'm going to go right here right there on that one, right above the, the R9 mounting hole. I think I am going to get the microscope out. So I got this uh, cool little microscope Christmas present from my brother. Thank you.
I put on some clear nail polish. There's no metallic content in the nail polish that I can tell. I'll just wait for that to harden. I like the idea of chaining them together as a real I2C bus would, kind of like with Stemma plugins, so they're just directly chained on the same bus. second from this left side to second from this left side then on the bottom it's third from the left to third from the left so next we have to remove this wire that to the resistor this is a big old solder blob oh wow that's actually it's actually going up pretty quick oh that works so cool god i love this thing We've got those and then that along with the cut trace. And that should give this one the address of 21. So switches 1 through 8 will be on OX21. And switches 9 through 16 will be on OX20. So now I'm going to have to move the buses around. Oh, well, looks like that worked. I just flipped around a couple things in, in Moo. Namely, change the address to the correct address. Uh, change the bus from 1 to 0. Uh, removed the entire ITC1 bus. Just commented it out. Both devices are running from GP12 and 13. So the entire bus... Uh, the entire bus zero is now 1213 and as you can see it just works so this is uh, multiplexer zero and then the switch number so we got five uh, this one yeah this one has a, a cold joint this is what happens when you have a cold solder joint the switch, the switch doesn't want to work right. This has nothing to do with the 3D printed enclosure. It's, it's the solder joint on the back that I have to go and re-solder and fix. Um, which brings up a troubleshooting issue. If uh, if your LEDs aren't working, then look on the back for the, especially the ground pin uh, for the LED. But if the switch is not working, then check the ground pin on the back of the switch and make sure that that doesn't have a cold solder joint. And this is how it should work, and therefore, Stemma should actually be able to work now. Uh, this one is the HTU31D Temp and Humidity. Green LED denotes power. So we're getting power to Stemma, at least. Well, power is the easy part. Power would work anyway. Just to make this easier for now, I'm just going to start with one. We'll just start with one. And that is the HTU31D. I'll go with IT, I'll just stay with ITC1 because I know it's ITC1. That was the whole point is to get ITC1 back. So I'm not going to rename that. And this should be on pins 27 and 26. ITC. This should be ITC1. 
getting no errors. Oh, there we go. Unexpected indent. Oh, I guess that would break it. It's Python. Yeah, there we go. We've got temp. Sequencer's running. Stemma works. Okay, so I'm going to call that a fix. Uh, I'm not going to release this particular code because it's got temp sensors and displays. and Thankfully, not a lot of people have the boards. So I can just go to each person, tell them they need to do this fix. And I would like to think everyone would voluntarily do the bodge fix uh, so their boards get more functionality. Everything right now is running like I wanted to design it to. So everything's working how I wanted it to. I got uh, Stemma, Stemma QT working, which means that the uh, the Stemma QT breakout port now works. I got I2C working, and this I2C display is now running on 12 and 13. That's how to fix the TR Cowbell version 1.2 I2C bus design flaw. Now everything is working, at least hardware-wise, how it should.